Hey everybody, it is Drew from Como Comic Books and I want to welcome you to another one of our live streams. We are back tonight with a brand new episode of Talking Comics and in this episode we are breaking down the Falcon and the Winter Soldier as it's getting ready to come up on Friday. That show will release on Disney Plus and coming out of WandaVision who knows what's going to happen. I think WandaVision was a bit of a game changer as far as the comic market where this slow, steady drip of new episodes were impacting what and how the market was reacting every single week where you had this book popping up, that book popping up. I mean, and for God's sakes, white vision is a thing now. So that's just crazy. So the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is next on deck. Who knows where we will go from there. But we've queued up a few books that we're going to talk about today just to help provide a little comic book based background leading into the show. And I say we because today I am joined by a good buddy of mine. He is the owner of Middle School Geek Comics from just down the road to the west of me in Lawrence, Kansas. And my buddy is Tom Barker. So, Tom, how's it going? Hey, Drew. Thanks for inviting me out to be a part yeah. of the show. Yeah, man, no problem. I know it's something we've talked about doing uh, for a while now, so it's good to uh, get you on the show and finally get into it. So what's your take on Falcon and the Winter Soldier? It's kind of hard because, you know, I think WandaVision – set the bar so high i mean that was just a great series even you know i have a 10 year old son who loves the show we've actually re-watched it we just had mm -hmm. spring break this week and uh, we watched it again and then now that the falcon and winter soldier are coming up it's like that bar so high mm -hmm. and it's like man i hope i hope that our expectations are, are going to be you know about the right level for that show um, yeah just because, man, I mean, I loved WandaVision. And, you know, this looks like it's going to have a little bit more action, you know, just in looking Definitely. at the trailers, that bittering of back and forth going is looks like mm -hmm. that's going to be great. Yeah. And so I'm just hoping that it's maybe not half of what WandaVision is, but, you know, if we could get at least like 75 or 80 percent of that quality, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. My experience with most things on Disney Plus thus far, particularly the more episodic things like Mandalorian, WandaVision started this way for me, is that it takes two to three episodes in before I feel like anything really happens. I feel like we spend so long setting up what's going to eventually happen and it, it just can be a burn, it seems like for me in those early episodes. And with only a week in between WandaVision's final episode, which, let's be honest, WandaVision was going 100 miles an hour um, when it finally wrapped up there last week, to so quickly follow up a show that is, you know, hitting its peak and really just running in stride and, and telling great stories, to come right back in two weeks later and to try and start telling your own story, I think is a bit of a challenge for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But there are definitely some things that it has going for it that WandaVision didn't really have. I think just the whole action-adventure buddy movie um, approach that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is apparently um, going to be based on really will help it out. The fact okay. that... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think the other thing, too, and we kind of talked a little bit about this is, you know, even if we were to go to Mandalorian, but, you know, those 20 minute episodes with seven minutes of credits. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are going to be 45 to 55 uh, minute episodes. So I think, you know, the big criticism that we saw on social media was like, oh, episodes one through three were so boring. You know, they kind of dragged mm -hmm. through. But I think with these 50 minute blocks or 45 to 50 minute blocks, um, you know, it's going to be basically, you know, four to six hour movie. Um, mm -hmm. I think that'll kind of hopefully speed it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But 
I also wonder if there's going to be maybe some more highs and lows because I can't see yeah. at that end of that 50 minutes, it's always going to be some kind of action scene that we're used to from a Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like we're all conditioned for that 45 to 65 minute episode after, you know, watching Game of Thrones or Mad Men or, or whatever, um, you know, the... the the long form content that we've been used to taking in over the last couple of years. So I think that'll be good. Um, it will definitely be a switch. And I was one of the people who was critical of WandaVision because just as soon as each episode had me hooked, boom, it was credits. It was time to go. So that was hard for me. And I was also about three fourths passed out when I first watched the, um, first two or three episodes because I was uh, burning the candle at both ends like we do in the comic business sometimes. And I just assumed that kind of colored my opinion of it. So I need to go back and rewatch those early episodes. But from about episode four on, we watched each one twice, pretty much back to back right as it came out just to really take it all in. So that's enough about that. How about you give us a little introduction? Um, just let us know about yourself and middle school geek and what you do how you approach um what we do in the comic biz and then we'll dive into some of these books sure so um you know you gave a great introduction at the beginning um i'm owner operator of middle school geek comics we're based here in lawrence kansas and uh you know i think one of the just being a comic book vendor going out and selling at different cons throughout um the midwest kansas and uh missouri um, going down into Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, even as far as Illinois. Um, but the pandemic has really changed up um, being able to do to con. So we've kind of had to move our business, um, doing a lot of stuff on eBay. Um, people ask why the name Middle School Geek. Um, my real job, I'm, I'm a full time. Uh, I teach seventh grade social studies. So being a middle school teacher, I thought it would be great to just go with the title Middle School Geek. Um, and so if you ever come out to cons, you'll probably see me. You'll also see my wife. Um, my wife is actually part of the business, though. She's not really into comic books, but she's really into crafts. And she does a lot of string art and things. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, um, you know, if you just do Middle School Geek, um, you'll probably find it. But you'll see a lot of the things that she makes. And, and those are really popular, and people really enjoy those things as well. And so um, that's kind of a little bit about me and what we've been doing here. Right, but, and I know one of the things we we've talked about is um we haven't really done I haven't done a con in a year I know you've done one but we're looking yeah. to, in a couple of weeks we're actually going to be able to to do a con and set up mm -hmm. at an event um, absolutely and everybody that's been with me for a while you've heard me talk about you know our our big shows Planet and Kansas City and stuff like that but. 95% of the shows that I do, Tom is either right next to me or I could throw a baseball yeah. and hit him. Um, we're that close. And we're actually diametrically opposed as far as yeah. our college affiliations, whereas he's in Lawrence, Kansas, and I'm in Columbia, Missouri. So we're not supposed to like each other, but we come together for the comics. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. The power of comics brings us together. And um, I think it's... Uh, one of your comments there is like, what's in a three by three case behind me? And outside of mm -hmm. comics, that's my other passion right here is uh, college basketball and, um, you know, love the Jayhawks and everything. And so um, where I get to tell Drew we're, we're doing great at basketball, he can be like, How, how's that football team doing? And so uh, yeah, it's yeah. reminded about that. So. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say we talk about some comics, Tom? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So I think the obvious book, the obvious starting place is Captain America 117. Uh, you know, what do you have to say about that one? This book has blown up. We have been looking, I've been looking at GPA sales and, you know, I'm a big mm -hmm. Captain America fan and um, oh, yeah. I, I wanted a solid copy of this book. I bought it a not graded 9.0 copy of this Um about two years ago from a buddy um, who lives south of us. I bought it actually at um, the Memphis uh, comic show there. I knew he would have it and we bought it. I bought a 9.0 copy. I think I paid about 650 for it. 
And I was just looking last sale of a 90 copy, uh, $2,218. Um, wow. I, I mean, that's just, that's insane. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually, I, I think we were talking about this before, but I haven't looked at some of my wall books. They've just been sitting there waiting, but you know, I mm -hmm. pulled this out, you know, this is kind of a little bit of a glare, but it's in a mylar, but just a beautiful copy. Um, yeah. Probably about an eight Oh copy. And I was like, well, how much did I have on it? And you know, I had, um, you probably see it. I had $360 on it. Not anymore. And that's not the case anymore. This is easy. Mm -hmm. Like an $800 book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, wow. I, I just can't believe how much this has exploded. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know if everybody can see behind me, but I've got a couple of books that we're going to talk about. Uh, that's the 117 that was in my inventory, and it's not nearly as nice as Tom's. I think I had uh, 125 on it, but I and it's a, a lower grade copy. But I'm gonna have to revisit the price for it as well because it's just like you said, the, the market has moved drastically on that book. Well, um, and I'm looking right here. I'm looking at the last sales, um, mm -hmm. but a 9.4 just sold for 3,500 a couple days ago. Yeah, and even in the lower yeah. grades, there's some significant movement. You're looking at a, a 3.0, 90-day average has been 125. It's uh, up over 170. Looking at last sale on a 4.0, hitting $340 earlier this month. So Well, and even there's a 6.5 that just sold a couple days ago, a 6.5 for $800. I mean, Yeah, which is double the 90-day average. That's yeah. just crazy. So obviously – first appearance of the falcon he's got lead billing that's a not a book that's going to be a surprise to anybody so let's shift gears and our next book the other obvious one in all of this captain america volume five number six the first appearance of the winter soldier yeah um this is again i think this is one of the major books um steve epstein is you know um probably one of my favorite Captain America artist. I, I love him. Um, him and Mike Zeck, I think they're those classic artists. Um, and Brubaker, like, he's just a great writer. Um, yes. Those two combined should make a winning book. And yes. just the fact that this is out there is um, you're going to see significant gains on this. I think we were looking, mm -hmm. or I was looking earlier, and we see sales that are getting up to about $100, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. Um, actually, if you... I think I sent you this last night. If you look at Key Collector, um, yesterday morning, Key Collector was showing this as a $130 book for high-grade raw copies. Last night, before you know, we uh, tucked each other in, not really. Tom and I <laughs> no. are, are always up late at night texting each other as we're working on our inventories. Um, but... It was after midnight, and I was looking at it again, and it had gone up to $150 for a raw high-grade copy. And what did I tell you before I sent you that? What did I tell you earlier yesterday afternoon? Yeah, you said it was undervalued, and, and I kind of responded back because of, I would say, a volume like two through the current. I'm probably only missing like about 20 issues. And this is the issue I've been was holding off on, mm -hmm. just because I wanted a really nice copy and I had the omnibus. Mm -hmm. But um, now I'm kind of kicking myself in the rear, wishing I would have had this. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in a similar way with the variant because I have um, I have this bad habit when I get into something, I just dive in head first, and that's the way it was with this. The first issue of Volume 5 I bought was a reprint of 25, which came out about the same time issue 26 came out. Because as I recall, Marvel did that typical Marvel thing where they're like, oh yeah, we're going to kill off a major character, but we're not going to tell anybody so you can't order enough copies. So first printings of 25 were just gone out of the gate. So I get into it, and the first thing I do is, okay, I've got to get 1 through 24. So thankfully, I was able to pick up the regular cover, but I could never bring myself to drop the 60 or 75 bucks that this variant always was, um, which the cool thing about the variant, I know it's a little smaller on the, uh, the screen. I'll make it a little bigger. Um, but the thing about the variant is it's basically the mirrored image of 
the A cover, only it has the Winter Soldier on it. So uh, when you look at that, you get that magical combination of first appearance and first cover appearance as well for the Winter Soldier. Um, and that variant, honestly, um, I think is a little behind pace right now because the A cover is blowing up, but the variant hasn't moved a lot. So they're pretty much blow for blow right now as I look at it. And I, I think that's a book where there's probably going to be a reaction and a price correction. Um, just where it should naturally stay a little bit ahead of the A cover, in my opinion. Yeah, I haven't looked at the prices, but I mean, it, it sounds like if you're going to pull the trigger, go for the variant and, and get that if it's that far behind and get it while you can. Almost. Yeah, especially if you're paying pretty much the same money. I mean, you, yeah. you might as well take the one that has the uh, the lower print run. Yeah, it definitely, because in the long run, that's probably going to be the better investment. Well, I hate to say investment, but it's going to be the better investment in, in, in thing that's going to be a little bit more collectible. So Correct. All right. Let's see here. Shall we move along? Yep, let's get snack. All right, let's talk about the book that nobody else is really talking about in relation to uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Tales of Suspense 75. Um, and to, for me, this is a twofer. There's susp or a reasonable level of expect expectation that Batrock is going to show back up in the MCU in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And we've seen from uh, promotional materials that Agent 13, you know, Sharon Carter is also in this. And, you know, when the stars align and you get two first appearances for characters that are going to be in the same show, why is nobody talking about this book, Tom? Well, I think, you know, and I, I was thinking about this, like, what do I want from the show? And, you know, it's going to have Sharon Carter there. And I feel like Sharon Carter, like, has been in a, like an, like an important character in the MCU because mm -hmm. I think she connects, has some connections between different people in different groups, that connection between S.H.I.E.L.D. and then also that generational connection for Captain America, right, from mm -hmm. um, the war to the present. And the thing mm -hmm. is, is I don't, I'm hoping that this series develops her character a lot. Um, I think if, I don't know if we're going to see a price jump in this at all. I think it really goes back to how they're going to develop her and whether or not she pays a, a key role, because if she doesn't play a key role at all if she's just there as kind of like the trusty sidekick and not really a part i, I don't think you're going to see much movement um in the book at all mm -hmm. um, i mean that's just kind of my thoughts i mean i think that there are some other books out there that i'd be more wanting to like grab as opposed to this mm -hmm. but at the same time you know this is one of those classic silver age books that you're not going to find everywhere either especially yeah. in a nice grade my just kind of gut feeling with it is that Disney is doing so much to develop female characters and really do right by female characters that have just kind of been shoved off to the wayside in the past in various forms that I just feel like they're not going to do that with Sharon Carter. Like Peggy Carter was such a huge part of, you know, Cap's trilogy outside of the Avengers movies that bringing or shining some of that spotlight I mean, for God's sakes, Peggy had her own show. I mean, we may kind of forget yeah. about that since it was on ABC, but there's a big space in this Captain America universe for the Carter ladies. And I'm hoping that that carries over into, uh, you know, how they treat Peggy or Sharon moving forward, because I, I really like the actress they've got in the role. I think she does a good job. Um, she's got chops, you know, she... I mean, for God's sake, she went nose to nose with crossbones in Winter Soldier, you know. So there's a good foundation to build there, uh, build from there. And honestly, of all the characters in the MCU, I feel the worst for her because nobody else open mouth kissed their uncle <laughs> in a movie. You know, it's just like, oh, that. How are we gonna fix that, guys? So <laughs> let's go back to the writers' room on that. Yeah. One. Yeah, that's some that's some problems. It's not like kissing your your sibling. Um, but. Yeah, no, definitely. But in all seriousness, this just seemed to be a book to me that was flying underneath the radar with 
two first appearances related to the show. And it's not that expensive of a book really to begin with. Um, yeah. And I checked and I, you know, I have a, I have a, one of my PC cause I've been, I've been working on that Captain America tells us dispense run. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think again, it's just going to come back to how they develop it. I mean, it's just like white vision. I mean, yeah. who would have ever have known white vision is going to be a thing. Um, you know, I always know how popular a character is if my 10 year old son knows about them. And now he knows about White Vision. And I've had to show him the comic of White Vision. And so I think if it gets to that, then maybe we'll see uh, this price actually go up in this book. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's not, it's a Silver Age first appearance book. It's not like it's going to go down in value. Definitely. Um, and this is a book just to focus more on the actual book when I can find this thing and it's not just all tan or creamed up, you know, just really, um, weather worn from, from the, the years, uh, it's something I like to pick up because like so many of those uh, silver age, white Marvel covers, they can just, they can turn Brown and you really lose a lot of the eye appeal. So when I find a nice white copy of that, where the colors still pop, I always like to try and pick it up. I'm looking at the uh, chat here, Tom, seeing what we're missing. Uh, apologies, everybody. When I uh, remembered that I actually have access to the chat, there was quite a pile of messages up there. So I was going to say, I think it's uh, Steve said, um, is it a good time to sell cap 117 or hold? I'm not going to lie. If it was me, oh, yeah. I'd hold it. I would definitely hold that book because it's just going to keep gaining momentum, momentum, mm-hmm. momentum. And I think it's been an undervalued key for a long time. I think it's definitely been undervalued. Yeah, even when it did get a little attention, it didn't go up that much, right? It, it went from... It really didn't. Maybe a $75 book in a, in a lower grade or a middle grade copy to a $150 book or something. So, yeah, percentage-wise, that's a pretty good chunk. But dollar-wise, it's still you know, pretty accessible for the average collector. So I agree with Tom. I think that right now, if you haven't already sold it up to this point, I think you're kind of, you've already missed that lead up to window to, to release it. And I honestly think if this show can capitalize off of the momentum that WandaVision set up, you know, leaving off just last week, that they could springboard off of that because right now, these Disney plus MCU shows are front of mind with so many people out there because of the success of one division. So if they can take that springboard off of it and really just ramp interest in these characters up, you know, 117 could see a pretty substantial bump. Um, I don't see, even if it doesn't see a big bump, I don't think it's going to go down. So I don't think you should be worried about losing anything in the short term. If you do hold. I think the other thing too is, you know, with some of the key books that we saw that gained value with WandaVision because of how close um, this new series is, I think we're going to see that curve come down. Mm-hmm. Whereas where if we look at the Falcon, I don't, I, I checked on it, but the next series that's coming out is Loki. And that's, not, and that's coming out in June. So we're not going to have that space. And this is only six episodes. So you're going to have a much longer, uh, I think people are going to be much more tied into Falcon. Whereas with WandaVision, it's like, oh, WandaVision was great. Now we move mm-hmm. on to the next thing. So I think there's going to be a little bit more of a hold time onto the Falcon. And so I'm not, you know, again, I'm not, I don't know how that's going to impact the prices, but I could see that keeping that price steady for a lot longer period than maybe what we're going to see with some of the WandaVision books. Yeah, and maybe we need to pull out a, a little bit here because, yes, Loki is the next Disney Plus show. But in the meantime, we've got the Black Widow, which might yeah. finally come out. So um, you a know, year later. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if these characters show up in Black Widow and that just kind of, you know, helps insulate the fire and keep it burning um it could definitely see even more uh interest as time goes on so i want to give a shout out to scott 
watching us live from across the pond over in England. Hey. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Um, I'm going to try and get better about shouting out the chat and just kind of keeping pace with that. But, you know, it's all good. Um, I'm glad everybody's here and having a good time with us. Tom, are you ready for the next book? Yeah, let's talk about the next one. All right. Cap 275. First appearance so, of Baron Zemo number two. And first of all, this is a great Mike Zek cover. I have always had this has to be one of my favorite covers that he's done. Um, I went to a con. I've been to a couple of events where Mike Zek has been and I've had him. Uh, I had him sign this issue, but I know that he even sells prints of this as well. Um, so I think this is that part where we get, you know, the comic book world and the MCU kind of where they cross over a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the Baron Zemo that we have in the comic book world is going to be different than the Baron Zemo that we're going to have in the MCU. Yep. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be different. Um, if I understand uh, correctly, it's going to be played by the same actor. Um, my gosh, is it David? Is it Brule? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's from... going to be the same actor that we saw in uh, Civil War. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you see the trailers, he's talking about ending superheroes and all mm -hmm. of that. Whereas in the comic book, you know, he's trying to get revenge um, for what happened to his father by the cap. So I think you're going mm -hmm. to see the characters are going to be different. I personally, I would, I have several copies of these. I think if you could get a great newsstand issue of this, go for the mm -hmm. newsstand. If it's a direct, that's fine. But I think just because, first of all, iconic cover, great first appearance. We'll see. We know that he's going to be um, in there. I know mm -hmm. somebody earlier was asking who the bad guy is going to be. I think this is mm -hmm. one of the ones that um, definitely, I would just, if I had a copy, I would just hold and see what happens. If I mm -hmm. saw one cheap, at, a, at an event or even online, I would just snag it for a couple bucks and see what happened. Yeah. Um, I think I was selling these for maybe like three, four, five bucks just because I had a, a lot of them. Um, well, you know, yeah. the same as I do, I, you can't buy a, a collection of books from this age and not have a stack of cap. <laughs> yeah, for the you know, every, that's the good thing about when books were 60 cents a piece. You could buy a little bit of everything. Um, in fact, the collection we just bought uh, together, I think I wound up with all the caps, and I picked up another one of these in that. So thank you. You got White Vision. I got Zemo. I think you got the better end of that. One. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think the thing is, too, is I think, um, I think there's really a lot they could do with developing that character. I mean, we really – I mean – Civil War was great just because, like, the whole ending was different than what we thought, you know, destroy mm -hmm. it from within. Um, obviously, he got arrested. He's going to have to get out of jail somehow, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, we don't know what's happened to him since Infinity Gauntlet. Um, we don't know what happened right. to him. We don't know what there. Um, but mm -hmm. I think this is a good bad guy that we could develop um, for this series. Definitely. And I'm a big fan of any time that the MCU doesn't take the one and done approach with villains, right? So not only do we spend the whole movie building up to why they're bad and, you know, the narrative runs its course and, ah, oh, crap, they died. And, well, we'll never see them again. The fact that Marvel's starting to take a longer term approach where the villain lives to fight another day. I think opens up this whole other level of conflict that can be had because yes, Zemo is Owen one right now in the MCU, but you know, as with every good madman, he came at you with his best plan at that moment. He's going to go back to the drawing board and he's going to come up with something new. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm really excited to see the classic costume come into play. Because uh, that's been one of my struggles with the MCU is I get you need to have a level of realism in the movies and that everything that looks good or cool or, you know, we're just accustomed to in a comic book doesn't translate over necessarily um, the best into reality when you're trying to do it in real life. 
Side note, I loved when we finally got a legit Scarlet Witch costume in WandaVision. I thought that was great. Um, so I was very excited to see that. I think they nailed it. But I th- honestly, as it stands right now, outside of the superhero buddy movie concept, which is kind of what I think we're in store for leading up, at least that's what I've been led to believe, leading up through the promo material, that and then Baron Zemo's classic costume are the two things that right now that's what I want to see on my TV in relation to this show. So Cap 275, I, I think, is definitely a book that everybody should pick up. I think it's, what, $25 right now for yeah. high-grade copies. And I guarantee you that you can find this book in discount bins at your local comic shop or what have you, you know, a yeah, flea and, market someplace. And even mid-grade copies, like, you can find fairly inexpensive. I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, you can get it pretty cheap. And, you know, if anything, for the cover. I've, I've always loved this cover, so. Yeah. Uh, Tom, we are not alone. The enemy is among us. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. Baron Zemo is right. I'm secretly working with the Flash. Yeah, yeah here you go. Spoiler, you go. spoiler <laughs> alert. So, uh, yeah, yeah. What was that? Cap three twelve. I don't think I don't think it made yeah. our list, but uh, there's a bonus cut for you. Um, so yeah, and if you want to go deeper on Baron Zemo, obviously it's not going to be issues that are reflect or the character that's reflected in the show. But yeah. Avengers six, the first appearance of the original Baron Zemo, I think is uh, worth looking at if you're a Silver Age collector and you want to stick to those kind of books. Also. Uh, we were talking about this before we went live. Avengers 56 is kind of a retelling of Cap's origin where you get a little more detail about um, what happened to Cap and Bucky at the end of the Golden Age, why Cap went away. And in that, you learn that it was actually um, in a departure from how it was depicted in the MCU where Hydra is the reason that Bucky got blown to hell and became the Winter Soldier. In the comics, it was actually Baron Zemo. Um, that blew up Bucky and why he became the Winter Soldier. So there's... Well, I didn't know. I didn't know if you're looking at the chat, and I don't know if this is the next one. But somebody's asking about Cap three twenty three. I don't know. Is that one not the next on the board or Lario Man? Yeah. Look, I, I need you to calm down. <laughs> you can't get ahead of us. All right, you just you can't get ahead of us. We'll get there. Yeah. Stick with us. Um, <laughs> I, I accidentally hit the wrong button and put uh, Zemo back on the board. So, so go. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get Zemo out of here. We don't need that. Um, we do have Bishop Davis up in here saying he found two 275s yesterday for three bucks. I don't oh. know if that's three bucks each or three bucks total. Either way, that's a good deal. And yeah. uh, he's winning on the weekend uh, because I didn't buy anything this weekend i just worked all weekend that was awful but yeah. that's all right are we ready for the next book tom yeah let's go to the next one all right man yeah so um all right lario now's your time <laughs> lean in on this one so uh 323 so um first of all i think this has always just been one of those classic covers because marvel did all of these with the different things I know everybody wants the Care Bear one, and everybody wants, what is it, Heathcliff? Heathcliff, but, Muppet Babies. Yes. But I've always loved this head profile shot of um, of uh, Captain America here. I mean, this mm-hmm. is when we have John Walker introduced as kind of that, I don't want to say kind of like that opposite, but it's a different type of uh, patriotism. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Christopher Priest right now is doing a series um, with U.S. Agent, and it, the title mm-hmm. of it is called American Zealot. Okay. And so we kind of know John Walker, where he's at. We know that when they developed it, because we know that, um, you know, he's going to be the main character for the first couple for the first couple uh, issues after this series. I think it goes mm-hmm. to uh, maybe like, is it 350? Or it's probably earlier. I don't know. He's mm-hmm. main character for several issues. Yeah, but we know that um, 
We know that he's supposed to be in it. There's been some screenshots released. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, I think it's just a good book. If you're a Captain America, this is like a great book to have. Um, uh, Again, it's a lot of speculation. How are we going to develop uh, John Walker? What's going to go there? Um, Yeah, I mean, talk. I don't even know what the hell to call the guy. He's had so many names. Yes. I mean, how many identities can one person have? This is just crazy. Um, But... I share your sentiment. I think it's a great book to have. It's a book that is always in demand because as time goes on, there are more and more people that are trying to piece together this 25 or 25th anniversary cover set. And it's not an easy thing to do, especially when those star comics issues we talked about come into play. Um, But this is one of the more accessible ones um, in that run just as far as availability, but then when you couple that now with an interest in it, I think it's going to be one of those books, if you're interested in building that set, that I would try and track down sooner rather than later, based on, uh, we're going to, excuse me, there. We, we're going to just assume that this book is going to maintain for a while, depending on, how in however important john walker's character is in the show and i know when you look at some other places there's a lot of speculation about other monikers he's gone by you know whether he's i, I can't even remember i'm not gonna try them all out right now but i think the if you're interested in going in and investing in or collecting john walker I would start here first, since this is his first appearance, and then just be prepared to pivot to which other or whichever um, alternate personalities or titles um, that maybe he transitions into in the show, if we even get that far, in all honesty, right? Yeah, and I I think the thing is, too, is, um, you know, is this going to be... um, I mean, if we go back to WandaVision, we have several characters there. Um, but is this going to be kind of like a Jimmy Woo character that there, but, you know, we're not going to see really develop um, a lot, even though mm-hmm. it was a great character. Um, we don't know yeah. how is he going to fit in? Is he going to be, because is he going to be this super zealot that's like, no, I'm to take Captain America's spot, like I'm the new mm-hmm. patriot and wanting to carry that mantle? I mean, I just think we got to see how it develops. But I totally agree with you. I think, first of all, if you just want a book to start off with and grab it, get it. Um, you know, it's just like you said, if you if you got a couple of these um, on the cheap, why not? Why not just get them? And especially they're always going to be collectible, like you said, for being that 25th uh, anniversary uh, cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mario. You know, the reason he's asking is, you know, he picked it up for ten. I, I can't remember what exactly this one was going for, but we're quite a ways above ten, as I recall. So, sounds like he made a pretty good buy on that one. Uh, is there anything else you think we need to touch on? No. Um, um, nope. I think that's good. We'll we'll see how it goes down. Time will tell. I'm I'm curious to see how long it's going to take before some of these faces that have been speculated on or alluded to um, really show up in the show. You know, whereas we have six episodes, I feel like most of the players are going to be on the field within the first two or three weeks. So yeah, hopefully we'll know sooner rather than later. Well, and with 45 to 50 minute episodes and only six episodes, you'd hope that we would get those really, we're going to get those really quick anyway. So. For sure. All right. Our next book, we're looking at Captain America, volume five, number 14. Um, yeah. This book, um, I absolutely love just due to the golden age throwback cover. Um, of course, you know, you mentioned it earlier. Epting's art on this run is just insane. So we get the origin of the Winter Soldier here. Tom, what say you about this uh, modern age throwback beauty? Yeah, so I think this one, just like issue six, um, bye, bye, bye. You know, I like now, like not tomorrow, like run down to your local comic shop, grab this, get on eBay, 
I yeah, this is the book. This is the one I would be buying. Is this in number six? I think these have so much potential because I think one of the things that we saw with WandaVision is it's one season. Like there's, I don't think there's going to be a season two. It's not going to be called WandaVision. They're going to have to change a title or something. I could be wrong, but this team up of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, that's going to continue to play out. I mean, once they've got that train rolling, it's going to play out into different parts of the MC uh, uh, universe. Um, they're going to be connected, and um, this is the one. This is probably the one that I would I would grab um, if I had them. Well, this would be the one that I would grab. Yeah. Um, beyond the cover, which I already talked about, which I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. This, in my mind, is kind of the the peak of the Winter Soldier arc in the comic books. Which, if you have not read Brubaker's Captain America run. I implore you to pick up the omnibus, the trade paperbacks, the hardcovers, the single issues, uh, digital, however you have to do it. You need to read this book. It is phenomenal from the end of the very first issue with what happens there. You know, this isn't going to be like any Captain America story you've read before. And Brubaker just keeps that train rolling through so many just crazy moments. Um, I can't say enough positive things about this run. So if you get nothing well, else from this live stream, read this run because it's fantastic. It is. It's a great run. Um, you know, I think they're getting to the point where they're going to start re they're starting to reprint these omnibus. There's about five. And I think some of them cover that Brubaker run. They're going to reprint this, but, I think this is probably like some of my favorite um, Captain America stuff um, out there. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, this is, this is such a great story, great art. Uh, art really helps the story so much. You could have some great stories, but if the art doesn't go with it, it, it could really diminish it. But here you have both really, really well yeah. done. Yeah, because Brubaker really writes in that noir, just kind of he writes cap more like a gritty spy novel um, as opposed to a straight superhero, which really plays well with the art in the book. And it's just, it's fantastic. But this issue specifically where you finally get the origin of the winter soldier. Um, I believe it's this issue where cap takes the cosmic cube. So, you know, I mean, normally caps trying to keep people from using the cosmic cube. So the fact that he actually breaks one out and just says, remember, and you know, boom, all this stuff comes back in and Bucky knows who he is. Um, oh, spoiler alert. Sorry about yeah. that, everybody. Um, Way to go. You ruined yeah. it. Bro. Sorry. Well, I mean, at this point, you know, we're like 15 years later. So I think I'm on fairly stable <laughs> ground. Um, but it, it's just a fantastic issue. Um, and I think there are some parallels with this issue um, with like a, Power Man uh, 48, where you get the first meeting of Iron oh, Fist Iron and Fist. Luke Cage, Iron right? Um, and, and Tom, if you don't have anything else to say about that, I think that leads us into this next book, which is where, yes, 14 was where they first meet, but here in 25, this would be the equivalent of Iron Man, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Heroes for Hire, essentially, uh, where, you, you know, Power Man and Iron Fist team up for the first time. So this book's got a lot more going on in it than just that. So where are you on uh, cap number 25? You know, I know this is the first team up. So I feel like, um, you know, to go back to your analogy of Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage, you know, in that world, this would be like issue number 50, for their official mm -hmm. team. Um, first of all, I think this is a great cover. I was looking um, back. I know that there's the variants. I know it's like reflective, but oh my gosh, that's too bad. Real bad. So there's the um, the variant. That's McGinnis, so, right? Yep. And then um, I was I had these. I bought these. I I want to say I bought even this one. Wow, that mylar is too bad. But I, I yeah. bought these like really cheap several years ago. Well, that's several years ago, about three years ago in a heritage auction. There was about six books and they were nine eights, but they were mm -hmm. these two. And uh, I think this book has been kind of undervalued just because it's the first like 
team up and not mm-hmm. necessarily like the origin. Um, uh, what did you look and see what the market price was right now for the book? These are down to about 20 or 25 bucks. Whereas, I mean, out of the gate, these were 50, $60 books. So I think that may have played a, a, a part in that. Whereas once the, the art kind of wrapped up, the story moved on, obviously cap came back to life yeah. um, and rebirth. So I feel like once that happened, you know, typical comic book world where nobody really dies. I feel well, like that's when this book started trending back down. But I also think that the headline has sh- overshadowed the other thing that happened in the book, which is, you know, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier pairing up for the first time. Everybody sees the death of Captain America. Nobody really thinks about, you know, okay, Cap's gone and his two buddies pair up to go figure out what happened. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, this is one of the ones like I, I've had, there's several variants and I think there's a couple of different reprints of it. Um, but I think this is one of those books. If I saw it and it was a reasonable price, I'd grab it. Even if it was like between a 10 or $20 book. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a lot of movement just because it's the first kind of team up with it Mm -hmm. um you know when luke cage came out and then when um defenders came out we didn't see much movement with um 48 and 50 of iron Mm -hmm. fist and power man there wasn't very much movement in those so i don't really know um if we'll see that kind of movement here as well um but i think if you could get on the cheap why not it's it's an Mm -hmm. iconic book it's the first team up um it just depends on what you what you want to do as far as a collector. Do you want to invest in it or do you want to add it for that moment because it's part of your collection? Yeah, I feel like this book has a high basement floor, right? Like it, it's it may never be this massive multiple hundred dollar book, but I feel like it's never going to be a five dollar book. You know, it's never going to be a ten dollar book. I feel like it's pretty comfortable at worst case in that $20 range, just because of, you know, the punchline is still ultimately it's um, one of the most significant books of the decade from when it came out. It was a major event. Um, Tom Bolt wants us to go off topic a little bit and ask about Crossed. Um, Just what we think of that after the success of The Boys. Um, Well, I was going to say, I think Crossed is is an avatar press that puts out Crossed, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't really got into it a lot. There's a lot of, I know, um, oh, Alan Moore has done a lot of stuff through Avatar, and that's kind of the stuff that I've been getting through Avatar. Um, mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. Um, I don't know much about the comic, except Avatar is putting it out. Um, we'll see. Now, I will tell you, the boys, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard at somebody getting their head blown off. Um, they were blown up in my life. It was, it was pretty funny, and I, I had never read uh, the comics, but um, we'll see. And I think the fact that it's such an independent book um, through Avatar, and I believe Avatar is a UK-based company. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think there might be potential in the market for that as well. But I think anything where there's traction or there's stuff that's like pre-production or like it's being offered or it's being sold is there's movement for it as well um Mm -hmm. that's kind of my thought on the cross yeah i'm i'll be brief i don't really have much skin in the game i haven't watched the boys i didn't read the boys um basically the way the boys was described to me is it's one joke told over and over again and it gets kind of old um so i never picked it up obviously it's connected with other people um, because the show seemed to be pretty popular. Um, I haven't read Crossed either. Um, I think it's kind of Ennis operating in his uh, blasphemy stage a little bit. And when I want a, a helping of that, I'm more of a Chronicles of Wormwood kind of guy. I love that series. I thought it was just um, horribly, horribly inappropriate, but I, I couldn't help myself. So if uh, I'm going to wait anxiously for anything uh, in us, it's going to be that, but I don't, I think that's so sacrilegious. It'll never actually happen. 
Um, I think I was going to say, I think the other thing that's kind of, if I remember correctly about cross is that there are a lot of different variant covers. Um, yeah, that seems was, to be an avatar thing. And, and I, I mean, I remember going back and reading um, the last Alan Moore series that they did um, Providence and there are just so many variant covers and it was a great read, but it was like, even after the fact they were going back and reprinting out different variant covers. Um, so that, I think that's one of the things with Cross is trying to not even just get the series, but it's like figuring mm -hmm. out which covers you want to get. Um, yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, that was our last book that we uh, prepped for Tom. Uh, okay. So yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Everybody, if you're still with us in the chat, you know, drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, you know, it's a Sunday night. It's kind of dreary here. So uh, I just want to appreciate everybody for hanging out with us. If you have any questions for us right quick, Tom, are you up for a, a little Q&A maybe if anybody's interested? Yeah, sure. If, we, if anybody has some questions, um, I was going to say, I, I guess I was thinking about this series and what are some things that I would like to see happen in this series. And I think there's two big things I'd love to see happen with the series is first of all, I'd love for us to learn more about Sam, kind of like his backstory, because mm -hmm. we don't really know a lot about him other than he was, you know, had these wings and this exoskeleton and he was working with- and he had, uh, a, had a partner named Riley that didn't make it Yeah, out. and that's all we know. And then the second thing too is with uh, Bucky is, we know that he's gone through a lot of serious trauma, a lot of serious mm -hmm. trauma. And I'd kind of like to see them kind of develop him as a character. Like how are they trying to uh, um, develop that trauma and how does that play out as far as him kind of, I don't want to say getting back his sanity, but like working mm -hmm. through that. Yeah. I'm going to let Bolt do our work for, or my work for me at least. And, you know, pound that like button. If you're getting value out of the video, be sure to hit like. Uh, we appreciate it. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, the algorithm really likes it, and you know, it, I appreciate it too. It lets me know that you're having a good time. Um, I was going to look. I, I know that Steve. He said cap one eighteen. Is that a yeah? Bot? That's where I was just going to go. Um, I don't know, Drew. What do you what do you think about this one? For me, I would get out from underneath that. Like if you feel there's been a bump on it and you're comfortable with where you're at with it right now, I don't think I would hold on to a second appearance at this point. Um, I don't think it's the best cover. I don't really think it just has that much going for it. Um, so if it's, if you're in a happy place with it, I think I would probably duck under it. At this point, if it was a 117, I think you're good with sticking to it. But um, I don't know. I, I just I don't see many people hunting second appearances unless they're building a whole run. And particularly where the first appearance is still as financially accessible as a book like Cap 117 is. I, I don't see that there's going to be a shift in the market towards 118 because 117 is price prohibitive all of a sudden yeah i think this is something we talked about a couple of weeks ago is you know no one can really afford a werewolf by night 32 anymore mm -hmm. um it just got insane so everybody now has switched to marvel spotlight 28 yeah um, i don't think you're going to have that same problem like you would here i think if you wanted a 118 just because you're like hey i have a first and i have a second i mm -hmm. think you could do that but i would also see what that bump is like um, when the show hits, wait a couple episodes and see what it is. Um, I don't think it's really going to be a long-term hold. But then again, um, you don't know. If 117 just gets too out of hand, even at lower grades for people, it has that possibility. But I'm pretty much on the same page with Drew on this one. All right. Bolt's got a couple. I went with his first question. Um, how do we think Infinity Gauntlet books are going to hold up now that the story's over in the movies? Um, honestly, I think think the infinity gauntlet is just going to be the the thing you know like this thing happened and now all of a sudden there's madness in the universe so half of everything in existence got blipped out right so everything that comes back is probably going to be pretty pissed off that you know they got blipped so i think that is narratively where the story goes 
to keep Marvel cosmic happening. You know, you've got Asgardians of the Galaxy, Thor 3, moving to a more cosmic uh, setting. You now have a situation where Marvel owns Galactus and the Silver Surfer again. You've just got all of these properties, whether it's Nova. Um, another question Bolt asked about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I think he asked about Adam Warlock earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, th there's just so much undeveloped territory in the cosmos that I think the Infinity Gauntlet may not be as big as it was, but I think it's still going to be a thing. I think, you know, in, in rewatching some of these movies, my son and I have been rewatching these movies. Infinity Gauntlet was like, if we talk about all of the Marvel movies from Iron Man one to the Infinity Gauntlet, like that was the pinnacle moment. It's not like in Guard Guardians of the Galaxy two when Ego dies, right? Yeah. Like nobody really, nobody, you know, the world. 23 movies, 22 movies yeah. building up to that moment. The, the movie, the, the world just kept going, right? But that is like the pinnacle moment that everything is going to hinge on. And I, I, I think it's always going to be there as far as like, so I think the books will be there as far as like the price of the books and whatnot. I think it's pretty much it's going to stay where it's at. I think you'll see some growth like we see over, but I, I just don't see it. It's not going to spike anymore. And it's probably have come down in price as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was one thing that I was thinking though, that you mentioned with Adam Warlock, I think it's at the end of uh, guardians of the galaxy two, where they show Adam the Warlock. Cocoon. And then you're seeing all of these other things. And I think one thing, I don't know, this is just me guessing, but I could see um, the MCU dividing and going kind of like we have this space series stuff that's happening in space and the cosmos. And then we have more of this like earth based kind of, of mm -hmm. series. And then there's going to be maybe something that ties them back together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I think especially the fact where we have a span of time where all of these movies exist. So, you know, the first Captain Marvel movie was in the nineties. So there's still, 10 or 15 years of narrative timeline in there where it may not be where we're at today, but wherever they want to set the individual stories in between, you know, how many more tales are there to tell um, where we can just jump back in that timeline and jump into a particular character's moment and interact with uh, an infinity stone that still exists at that point in time. So I don't think that, they're completely gone. I also don't think that Marvel will necessarily use them as a crutch too much. Um, I think it has major ramifications for a uh, character like Doctor Strange, where the supposed Eye of Agamotto was the Time Stone. Right. So, you know, that that was always his big thing. So what's he do without that now? So I, I think it'll be interesting to see where they go with it, but... I agree. I think Infinity Gauntlet 1 is always going to be um, fairly stable just because it's got the cover recognition and, and still even at 35 or 40 bucks, wherever it's at right now, I think it's it's probably not going anywhere. I think where you'll see the, the majority of the, the hits probably going to be more in like the Silver Surfer issues, um, the later ones. Uh, 34 where Thanos comes back, I think will always be yeah, a, a decently popular book. The same way with the first appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet and Silver Surfer Forty Four, um, but I also don't see books like Avengers Annual Seven, where the Infinity Stones show up, and then there's a Marvel team up with Warlock, um, where a couple of them uh, pop up too. It's just I don't I don't know that some of those more peripheral books will. Well, and I think out. the thing is too is even when people get the Infinity Gauntlet, even when they get the trade and they read it, they're like. That's not like the movie, you know, and they, you know, they yeah. kind of decide they're like, that's not how the movie goes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not how I remember this. And then mm -hmm. that's the, one of the things though, about collecting comics and then having this other media where the stories don't really line up too well either. So, yeah. All right. Captain Crunch. He wants to know what we think about Silver Surfer 3. 
man. I, I feel like this was the uh, the gut punch to everybody in the speculating or speculators market uh, with WandaVision. It's like, you know, everybody just knew. Like, it, it wasn't up for debate. It's when is it going to happen? When's Mephisto going to show up? We know it's going to happen. And then it's an obscure character from Fantastic Four that none of us saw come, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Got, this um, little old lady, right? You know, I, I always tell – I always – say this you know i rather have a decent silver age first appearance book um than something that's going to be hyped up that's more of a mm-hmm. modern book um yeah i think i think the long-term investment and collectability of that is just going to be more especially if you have it in higher grade so whether or not he appears or he doesn't appear is going to be fine i think the last time that we saw him in an actual comic book series that was put out was um, the damnation uh, series where it had um, in Vegas, where it had him kind of running the show and there was Dr. Strange, there was uh, iron fist, um, you know, and a lot of people thought, Oh, are they going to put back um, the midnight? Oh, my mind just went blank. The midnight night Suns. Yeah. Everybody thought there was a midnight Suns. Is that going to come out of this? Cause there's a great lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Greg Smallwood and another person actually pitched that idea um, mm-hmm. prior to that series going out, and they said no because that was it. But um, I think he's a character they can still do a lot with, and, and they just have it. And I think he was actually just in um, he was just in the recent Doctor Strange series as well, where mm-hmm. Doctor Strange is trying to collect the magical items and this technology kind of deal. So I don't know. Yeah. I think it's just one of those if you bought it. You know, it's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. They're going to st- still keep using that character. Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty well in the same train of thought with you. High grade copies, especially. I think what this speculation showed us is that there's still a lot of Silver Age books that are out there that are undervalued, underappreciated. They just kind of exist in the space that's out of sight, out of mind. Um, the high grade commentary on Silver Surfer 3 is particularly relevant because it's a square bound book. I mean, yeah, it's a 1968 yeah. square bound book, but still any of those old Silver Age square bound books in high grade are, you know, it's like finding a unicorn. It's They always have spine splits, the staples are pushed through. Um, hell, I've got a copy of ASM Annual 1 where the whole damn outside cover on the spine is just completely rubbed off the covers are still attached by some miracle magical force yeah exactly faith and uh and positive vibes are holding the cover on but square bound books are just so hard to keep in high grade and you know mephisto's always kind of been a, a puppet master kind of guy you know he's he's not a front and center villain he's more of a manipulator kind of how thanos started out uh, in the mcu so i think as the mcu churns on if we get into deeper phases and the universe stays feasible the public's still interested in it i think mephisto could come around at some point um particularly in some of the the darker corners where if we get blade established more the supernatural um aspects of it because i think um if we can get ghost rider back mephisto plays right into that along with blackheart and just some of these really great um supernatural characters i was gonna say in one of the preview trailers i think it's where they're having a for falcon and a he mentioned something like they always fight like the big three. And I think it's like sort no wizards, uh, mech robots or like big guys or whatever. And he mentions like mm-hmm. sorcerers, you know, and it kind of made me think, Oh, like that's one of the round or wizards. And they said, well, what about Dr. Strange? He's not a wizard. He's all, he's a sorcerer because he doesn't wear, you know, a hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it was kind of, it was kind of <laughs> funny. And he's like, you know, it's like Gandalf, and, and so it made me think, like, I think that's supernatural, because we have to realize, again, uh, Disney's doing this to make money, and mm-hmm. supernatural sells, and I'm not talking mm-hmm. just about the TV show, but people love supernatural stuff, and if they can market that and work in those other things, 
they're going to do it. Uh, let's just hope that they do it better this time than using Nick Cage. Okay, that's that's my only <laughs> that's my only suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it wasn't the best, but I didn't hate the first Ghost Rider. I still haven't seen the second one. Now, um, Blade was amazing. I don't care. Oh yeah, one, I mean, two, or three. Woo. For the time, Blade was solid. I and, love Blade. That was and, great. And let's just all take a moment to appreciate Wesley Snipes. The great comic movies we have today are built upon the work that man put in. You know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he didn't need to pay those taxes because we yeah. have, you know, good comic book movies now um, based off of basically him going out there and proving the proof or providing the proof of concept. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because those Fantastic Four movies did not do very well. Uh, yeah. Was that Tim's story? They were, um, yeah. for the time, I, I enjoyed them, but looking back, they don't hold up. Steve wants to know about Strange Tales 157 and the Living Tribunal. I, I don't know. I'm a I'm meh at best on that. Yeah. If you have it, that's fine. If you don't, I, I that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I I would not run out today and actively pound down a comic shop door just to get a copy of that but i uh i'm also more of a, a run collector so i already have these books you know it's uh i don't see it going anywhere necessarily but i also think when you're chasing first appearances of knickknacks and things like that you know these uh background elements that or even like MacGuffins, you know um I think they're really short-lived. If you can hit the nail on the head and pick something up comparable to this, then that thing shows up all of a sudden and the value blows up. I think you're looking at short-term um, holds it at best if you're able to be that on the mark. And I just think it's a, a bit of a, a reach for the most part. Steve's asking some more stuff. Wendigo. You know, I think Wendigo oh, yeah. is a saw book 162. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the terrible problem, cover. It is. The pro and the problem this is what I was gonna say is the problem with that cover is it's all white. Um, mm -hmm. you just can't really get a nice or I I can at least, I can never seem to get a nice cover that's just completely, completely white. There's always mm -hmm. a little bit of tanning or it's just just doesn't look good or it'll have some of the overspray from when they were being marked by the rubs from the issue on top of it. And the yes. bubble and yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I think that's one of the problems. I think it's a, it's a character we haven't seen used a lot. Um, and, and one of the few characters that can legitimately physically challenge the Hulk. Yeah. And, to go along with that, you know, the it's another comic book that maintains heat is any of those Hulk versus the Thing books. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't seen that in MCU or I don't know we'll ever see it, but those books mm -hmm. hold value. Uh, I mean, those Silver Age books, even the Bronze Age, and even going into some of the Copper issues, mm -hmm. if Hulk and you know, the thing throw down, that thing's going to go for it. I mean, it's going to go up mm -hmm. or it's going to maintain its value at least. Yeah, there are a, a lot of those. Uh, the, the obvious one being the first one in FF12. Yeah. Uh, the, the one I really like is, uh, is it FF25 or 26? It's actually very early thing in the Hulk fight. And it's the second Silver Age appearance of Cap after Avengers 4. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of goodness in that particular issue as well. All right. Are we ready to land the plane, Tom? Let these fine folks get back to their evening. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, Drew, thanks a lot for um, letting me come out and do this with you. Uh, I know we've talked a little bit about it a lot. Um, I'm glad that things are getting back to normal. And so I hope to see uh, some of you guys out at, at a con somewhere if you're here in the Midwest. Or if not, um, I hope uh, Drew doesn't mind this shameless plug, but you can always no, follow absolutely. 
you can always follow me on Instagram. It's just at MSG Comics. Um, I try to post stuff that we have going on, just cool covers, golden age stuff, things that we find, and then just stuff that we throw up in our eBay store, things uh, that we're doing. So, yeah. Um, so thanks a lot, Drew, for letting me come on out and be part of it. No problem, man. I, uh, I'm sure we'll chat later on tonight, but thanks for coming out. All right. And again, I was want to thank my buddy Tom for uh, hopping on and hanging out with us tonight. It's something we've talked about doing for a long time and just finally felt like the time was right. I really appreciate everybody that hung out with us this evening. Uh, if you are still here, thank you so much. Be sure to hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, if you hit the notification bell, you'll get notifications when we upload new videos, when we go live. As uh, I mentioned in the kind of year preview video, live streams are something I want to do at least once a month. So this year, uh, so, so far, we've managed to hit that mark. So very excited about that. Um, in addition to that, I want to thank everybody for the continued support. The channel is closing in on 4,500 subs, which is just fantastic. Um, very, very appreciative of that. So let us know what kind of content you'd like to see. If, uh, you know, you've liked some things we've done in the past, or maybe you just had this really great idea and we haven't thought of it yet. Be sure to share those with us. If you haven't had a chance to check out this week's new video, I posted a top 10 list that is the top 10 comics you should have bought from Mile High Comics 1980 Marvel Centerfold ad. That video is doing really well. It was a lot of fun. People seem to be enjoying it. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, I encourage you to head out um, of this live stream and spend a few more minutes with me on your Sunday evening checking that one out. Other than that, just thank you all once again. We'll have a new video this week. Um, Got to pay some bills on this one, so it's, it's going to be a sponsored video. But I hope you all check it out as well. With that, I'm going to land the plane. I'm going to remind you to collect responsibly, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good night.